Hi everybody, I'm here today with Craig Dalton, one of the owners of Dodo Case. They're the winners of our last year's Shopify Build a Business contest. And uh, how are you doing today, Craig? Doing great. Okay. Thanks for having us. Oh, no problem at all. Um, so you guys had great success last year uh, with the launch of the iPad and the Shopify contest. Uh, what's uh, happened with Dodo Case since the contest ended and, and you've moved on to bigger and better things? Yeah, it's been a crazy ride. I think uh, since the contest ended, if, if my sort of math is correct, we had about four or five employees at the time the contest ended. Mm -hmm. And now we're at 10 full-time employees and wow. 10 part-time employees. Wow. So there's been significant growth there. Uh, during the course of the contest, we had a single product. So much like Henry Ford and the Model T, mm -hmm. if you wanted a Dota case, it was black and red on the inside. <laughs> yeah. uh, now we have... Uh, about 12 different colors. Mm -hmm. We've supported Amazon's Kindle mm -hmm. e-reader, yeah. as well as developed an entirely new product line called the Bookback. Okay, yeah. And so, uh, the time go. Yeah. Okay. Cool. We'll bring up a picture of the Bookback there, so people can see what it's like. But uh, really great things happening over at Dodo Case. You guys just keep growing, eh? Absolutely. It's been great. It's been it's been great to grow in the city of San Francisco. Just tap into the wealth of craftsmen and artisan that, that calls San Francisco home. All right. Yeah, well, Dodo Case was really um, not one of the first, but one of the leaders in kind of bringing back a lot of uh, handmade uh, kind of slow goods to the gadget market. So that's great. Uh, so what we did uh, for everyone out there is we asked our store owners to send in questions they had for Dodo Case. Uh, obviously, Dodo Case has done a lot of great uh, things, made some great choices, and I'm sure learned from a few mistakes. So we want to kind of tap into that knowledge base they have there. Um, so one of our first questions, and I think this is a question a lot of Shopify stores have, is, uh, okay, I've launched my, deep, my product, I've launched my store, I've sold to my family, I've put up some AdWords ads, now what? How do I get the word out? Yeah, and I think that's a great question, and I want to try to be as specific and actionable as possible for people, because mm -hmm. I know that's what uh, business owners need. That's certainly what I look for. Yeah. yeah unfortunately, right. products are going to vary on a product-by-product product basis, so what makes sense? Mm -hmm. But I can talk a little bit about what I feel made sense for Dodo Case. Yeah, sure. Ha having a great product is obviously the, the baseline for any business. Mm -hmm. But beyond having a great product, I think one of the things Dodo Case invested heavily in was having a great story. Lots of businesses have great stories, but not a lot of businesses put those stories in the forefront of the customer experience. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we kind of we knew people could copy the Dodo Case, but we wanted people to have something to really wrap their heads around. So when someone asks you, well, what's that you're holding? You say it's a Dodo Case. You're not saying it's just a case for my iPad. You're saying it's a Dodo case. It was handcrafted in San Francisco in a traditional book bindery. Mm -hmm. So by coupling a great product with a great story, I think you then give your customers the tools to virally spread the word about your product. Okay, yeah, now, that's, that's a great point then. It's not just about trying to sell the product, but selling the story of the product and the company itself. Exactly. And, and as a small business, I mean, I think there's tremendous advantages in being super transparent and obviously in this age of social media we really took advantage of that and from day one we let our customers know hey it's, it's Craig, it's Patrick, it's Mark, it's Henry these are the guys behind the product whose hands are on the product if, if you love the product tell us we'd love to hear from you if you have a problem with it tell us because we're gonna listen and the way you handle that feedback and that interchange of information mm -hmm. I think is critical to the way that a small business is able to grow today. Okay, great. And you mentioned that when you guys started out, it was a pretty small operation and you've grown quite a bit. Were there obstacles you needed to overcome before you kind of got that big break or, or as that big break started happening where you gained wider appeal? What were the big obstacles in your way at that point? Yeah, for us as a, as a manufacturer and designer of products, mm -hmm. I think the biggest obstacles in the early days were um, creating scalable solutions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's one thing for the team to just sort of hand sand a tray, prepare it to perfection, and slowly bind a single cover. Yeah. But how do you do that for thousands of customers? 
and replicate the quality and the experience that you were looking for. Mm -hmm. So I think you know the biggest challenges for us were definitely on the operations side, just scaling and, and making sure that we could create a handcrafted product um, for the masses. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing I'd like to mention is that I think one of the things that we did do well that prepared us for scale was we, we definitely invested in the brand and the story and making sure that everybody on the team understood exactly how the brand was going to be presented and positioned. Mm -hmm. And I think that enabled us to, to when the, the major publications started calling us, we had a cohesive story to tell and a, a sort of a, a very strong framework to build upon. And I think that was, you know, that really benefited us. Okay, yeah, having everyone on the same page then. Yeah, great. Yep. All right, this question comes from uh, another Shopify store that makes uh, kind of a similar product in the handcrafted nature. Uh, okay. The store is Dexter, and they ask, uh, it seems with the handcrafted nature of your product, your production co costs are quite fixed. What areas of your specific business can you lower your overall costs? And they say, i.e., fulfillment, materials, um, so yeah, how I guess without going into uh, your trade secrets and that sort of thing, um, yeah, you know what what costs do you focus on to to get them lower to improve your profitability? Yeah, I mean it was a very astute question. Frankly, I mean it, it, the the writer of the question obviously noted that we're here in San Francisco and <laughs> things aren't cheap here and <laughs> bamboo's not a cheap material. Mm -hmm. But what we have experienced. Um, are some economies of scale. So, you know, traditional book books are made from fabric and board, and as you are able to commit to larger quantities of these raw materials, the price is going to go down. Mm -hmm. I actually think, you know, some of the air, other areas that you suggested we might be able to uh, achieve savings in, we've actually gone the other way and, and sort of done more expensive things, uh -oh. just as we've wanted to invest more in the service level we're providing our customers. So, you know, fulfillment and shipping has been something that we've probably invested more and more in rather than less and less because we want, you know, as we were able to tackle the inventory issues and get, actually get Dodo cases in stock, the next challenge was well, how can we get them as quickly as possible to people so that they're excited and wowed by the experience. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And uh, which marketing or advertising tactic has been the most successful you, for you in converting traffic to actual sales? We've actually done a bit of analysis of this recently, so mm -hmm. that the, the question is very timely. Mm -hmm. I think the, the biggest returns on investment have been um, PR related and viral related. Okay. So um, we know that obviously our, our efforts and investment in good PR have, have helped. Mm -hmm. And when we get stories out there, people tend to share them. Mm -hmm. Similarly, uh, you know, as I mentioned before, we built Dodo, the Dodo Case brand around the story of what we do and how we do it. Mm -hmm. uh, that story is easily conveyed, it's easily shared on Facebook and Twitter. So those have also been important elements to our success. But the, the sort of biggest buckets of customers come from either sort of PR efforts or blog related posts from you know, prominent bloggers. Okay, so I guess that goes back to the importance of having a story, having something worth sharing, right? Yeah, exactly, and continuing to reinvent that story. I mean, obviously the, the basic storyline of preserving the art of bookbinding has been omnipresent in our messaging, but if you think about it, we've, we've gone from iPad 1 to iPad 2 um, and added additional devices the basic product is is quite similar to what it was you know a year ago, yeah. but we found different ways to you know introduce artist inspired and designed cases. We recently did a crowdsource design competition where we allowed the community to submit designs for the interior of the dodo case. So just last week we we launched the three winners from that competition, mm -hmm. which has been really fun. And again, I think. You know those winners and those cases. They each have their own story and inspiration behind them, mm -hmm. and they create mini stories or mini dialogues that we can then go out and talk to the uh, to the press and to the blog community about. Okay, that's great. Um, this next question is a little bit more in relation to your Shopify store itself. Uh, but do you have any favorite apps or apps that you find really important in the day-to-day -day operation of your store? 
Yeah, we definitely do. I mean, we, we appreciate the app ecosystem in Shopify. I'm always, uh, I'm often going into the, the marketplace to see what's new out there because I, I think there's a lot of opportunity in there. If I just had to name three that I felt were important to us today, yeah. I would say market brain mm -hmm. uh, for advanced analytics okay. for our shop. Uh, I would say Curebit mm -hmm. for referral marketing mm -hmm. and uh, Chimpify for oh. connecting you know, Shopify email addresses with our MailChimp account. Okay, great. And we'll bring up some screenshots of those so that people know more about them. Um, the next question, uh, your, your site for Dodo Case and your store is simple and works well, uh, even as you've expanded uh, to further devices. But I notice you're starting to sell other things on the Dodo Case website. And what advice would you give store owners looking uh, to kind of extend their product offerings uh, from a specific use product out to other things? Yeah, frankly, I mean, when I read this question, I was thinking, gosh, I'd like to know the answer to that myself. Because <laughs> it is a challenge. You know, mm -hmm. you know, as I mentioned, when we launched, literally, it was a single page Shopify site that was essentially a bu big buy button for our <laughs> single product. Yeah. And it was great because you didn't have to think too much about that. As we, as we launched colors for the interior, we did invest in our own kind of color picker to again keep it pretty streamlined. Mm -hmm. But then as we introduce the uh, Amazon Kindle product and our book back product, we absolutely face this challenge further exacerbated by adding accessories that we thought our, our customers might like. Mm -hmm. So I'd say we're very methodically trying to figure out what makes sense. Mm -hmm. We're doing a lot of A-B testing on the site right now. Okay. We recognize, and I encourage anybody to sort of really own what your core product is. Mm -hmm. So for us, obviously, the iPad case is the, the lion's share of what we sell. So we want to make sure when someone comes to the site, although I'm, e I'm very eager to sell them an Amazon Kindle case and a book back, I want to make sure that their purchasing experience for the product they're here for is very efficient. Mm -hmm. So I actually think you're going to see from Dodo Case an evolution of the home page. We, we, if, we, if we were ebbing and flowing, we sort of ebb towards putting too much information out there on the home page and trying to accommodate some of our non-core products mm -hmm. on the home page. And we're actually going to reel that back a bit after doing some A-B testing. And you're going to see us focus very much so on, on, on the iPad case and then using other elements of the kind of checkout experience to upsell accessory items or, or other things the customer might like. All right, so A-B test it. It's really throw it out there and then test it to death? Absolutely. And, and that comment really goes across the board. Mm -hmm. I think whether you're talking about marketing, branding, don't assume you understand what the customer likes because you, your friends give you feedback or, or the team in-house does. Mm -hmm. I am a big advocate of testing and letting the data tell you where to go. Because we've made some surprising decisions that I probably wouldn't have made otherwise if we hadn't evaluated what our customers were actually telling us. Okay, well that's really great. I think we could probably do an entire video on testing and techniques and all that sort of thing. But Absolutely, I'm finding it's a, it's a it's as much, much art as it is science. Uh -huh. You're turning into a math geek now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Craig. I think that was uh, some really great answers on, as you say, actionable steps for people. I think you know, our stores can really look up to, to guys like you who have taken the reins and really moved forward with their online store and, and turned it into something huge. So we really appreciate uh, sitting down with us today and I'd like to say thank you very much. That's my pleasure. I wish everybody who's in the competition this year the best of luck. I'm really excited to see what comes out of it. I still think it's a, you know, it's a great time to start small businesses and with tools like Shopify at your disposal, it, it makes it easy to get going. And then you can just let your creative juices fly and, and really tackle the sales and marketing angle of things. Oh, great. Well, thanks a lot. And if anyone uh, wants to check out more about Dodo Case, head over to dodocase.com. And where else uh, can we find you social media-wise? You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Dodo Case. Mm -hmm. And then also on Twitter at, uh, at Dodo Says. Okay, great. And definitely go check that out. It's a great product, great website, great story. Thanks a lot, Craig. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers.